Hey everyone, Steve back here with part two, the official part two of the, the Sony PVM repair that we've been working on. If you saw part one where we disassembled the monitor and you saw that kind of shorter episode in between where I went over the tools and the parts that came in that we were replacing. Uh, today we're going to go through and actually start desoldering the circuit board and then we're going to replace a bunch of capacitors. I'll let you see some of that as it goes and we're going to continue on with this whole restoration process. Uh, please though, if you see this and you do still get a, get a chance to comment on whether you want our uh, shell to be, um, if you have any opinion on what maybe we should do for a color or, or design on there, uh, let me know. <clears throat> I do appreciate any feedback. If somebody comes up with something cool, I really appreciate it. It would help me out. Uh, but anyway, let's just go ahead and get right into our next step of getting broken down and uh, taking apart some capacitors. Before we get started working on this board, come over here. I want to show you a quick tip. Uh, sometimes you may have a little bit extra working space um, or a tabletop to do this on. But this is kind of an easier way to, if you have a lot of space, I've organized all my capacitors here from the delivery. And it just goes by my voltage and then my size on uh, the microfarads from lowest to highest at the bottom. So then I can go over here and whatever one I'm going to replace, I'll just come grab it. And then I know it sounds crazy, but I kind of move back and forth between my workstation. Uh, what I'll do for our video today, though, is I'll grab a stack of some already and plan out a spot that we're going to work on. And we'll go ahead and get started on that. But I just want to show that quick tip. It's uh, always good to make sure that you separate them and uh, know what you're doing. And double check when you're replacing these capacitors. Make sure you're not um, putting them in the wrong direction or the wrong size. So let's go ahead and go back to the board now. back here at the board and I did need to tell you that I did have to remove four screws from the board where it was bolted into this plastic frame that was sliding in and out of the monitor there and then there was a point here on the back of the flyback just this protective part that went into that black casing so just work around it and try to uh, slide it out you don't need to break it or anything but I want to show that that did come out and also marked up the remaining cables that were left and uh, removed them so I could have easy access to the rest of this board. So the first spot I've decided to work on is inside this shielding right here. There's just three capacitors in there so I've got them all prepared here at least to selected. And my soldering iron is heated up or heating up as well as my um, removal tool. And so what we're going to do first is we'll remove I'll remove each one of these one at a time, make sure there's no leakage underneath them, and then we'll install the new capacitors one at a time as we go. Okay, we're set back up here, and we're gonna uh, we're just gonna dive right in and um, go with the next capacitor. And uh, the first capacitor you'll be able to see me fully change is again in here. Let's go with this other big one. So I've got my finger on it and I find the two points of the back end of the capacitor here. And then I'll just put the edge of this gun on this removal and then it starts to get hot and then just, you know, clears it out. Get rid of all that old solder real easily. And you can even sometimes pull back on that while it's doing that and it safely pulls it out so there's the capacitor out again there's the capacitor we just pulled and then the nice thing about these capacitors I'm using is they're all red and let's take a look at them you can see just modern capacitance these are the same type of capacitor it's just one's a lot smaller than the other they've been able to downsize the size since the 90s they should be more efficient and smaller lighter it's a pretty good deal though so it's just an idea of what sometimes even though they're the same capacitors they look differently so while i've got this thing i'll trim this down and to note if you don't know much about capacitors the side with the white arrow on it that's your negative side it's got the negative symbol right there so the other side is your positive side 
and you can line that up with the spot where you just removed okay, I'll just look here make sure there's nothing really clean board spot where that was removed so just line up your your legs to go through those holes and uh, make sure you go positive and positive hole negative and the negative hole and at the same time when you do this you can check and make sure that you've got the actual capacitors you know match them up again it's a good way to double check and make sure you've got the right ones that you're installing after you pull it right before you put it in so oh, you know give it a double quick quick double check and then you know that you've done it all right and you don't have to really worry about checking it too much if something goes wrong it's, it's probably not what you've done and it, it, make sure you do your job right the first time but those legs are in there and then I just take a little bit of this no clean and dab each leg and then the first leg I'm going to solder will be this side so I'll trim it down to size and then take my soldering tip and usually I just tin it with this and that's just adding the solder to the tip a little bit um, like a, a, dab, a dab of it and of course when I did that the leg falls out Okay, so I got my dab of solder on there, and I'm just going to tap it on that leg, just ever slightly, back and forth. And the, um, that flux really helps it like flow all around the parts that you're trying to solder in there. So, there we go, that, that part's in, and then... I come back here now, trim down the other side of this. Yeah, another touch of that there. And you can go back after you do all this procedure and clean off that extra flux if you don't want it on there. If you're worried about it, um, got a little too much, so you can always take it off and not dab it on there. But it's not good. Just take your time, be patient. I know this this isn't really going fast, but that's okay. I don't really want to damage anything. So I always just take my time and try my best to avoid touching the board as much as possible, just the just the edge of the component and the tapping against the the board, or not the board, the pad. So there you go. That's another one. And uh, we'll go ahead and do this third little one right here. And then I'll let you come in and take a closer look at that. And then this is a different size capacitor. So again, I find it with my finger and then I just kind of know where it is. And yep, I look down here, I can find the capacitor markings and the legs, even on these small ones. And just get it on there. slides right out if you get all that solder off of it and this one's a little smaller so I'll just recheck make sure it's the right thing 1647 throw that one away and again this is the procedure of just taking and replacing capacitors it's just one at a time making sure you're doing the right thing and lining up and putting everything in the right spot um, there's no nobody like you know some people probably can go a lot faster than this but I just prefer to take my time and uh, eliminate any, any errors just I, I've, I, when I when it comes to soldering uh, you don't really have to be great there's no like secret to being too great at it, just being patient, I think, maybe, and do, having the right tools and the right, uh, like I said, the flux, because if you didn't do this with the, with, I don't know how people would do this without flux, um, I'd be too afraid I'd burn out the pads on the board or damage something, and 
the solder just won't flow as well around your components here. And so that's just something to remember. So that's the first leg. And then I trim that and do the second leg over here, this capacitor. And just you know, double check on the top. But you know, you can get some stuff and practice replacing capacitors on something. You know what has a lot of small capacitors is an old Sega Genesis Model 2. I'll bring the camera around now and take a closer look at the spot we just did. So, kind of see there, those are the three capacitors we changed. Look good. Um, like I said, they're red. So, when we look at this whole area, it's going to be just red and black splattered out because that's the colors of the rest of the capacitors. Red, mostly red, with some black ones in there. So, um, I'm going to go through and do some more. When I get to one of these other sections, I'll come back and um, we'll f tape some more footage of replacing some of the bigger capacitors because that was kind of an easy portion but I just wanted to give you a quick uh, you know idea of how this process goes now I'm gonna go back over to my select a capacitor and decide which ones I'm gonna change next okay so I've got my next set of capacitors it's another six capacitors wait seven this is seven right here so I'm just going to change out those seven. I'll let you watch my workspace here as I go. Well, you just kind of see I just go one at a time. I'll kind of talk a little bit more but about ways to practice this stuff because you're going to have to build your way up to getting this stuff. Again, these, this equipment's expensive. I think this um, it's about a $250 um, removal tool just for this thing I'm using right now. And it's about the cheapest, most effective one that... I've seen it's safely removing quick and quickly removing things. Um, so, I don't, again, I don't recommend using anything cheap like the twenty-dollar tool. That's okay for using and making modifications on bigger items, but not these important. Circuit board, so there we go, we got another one out, that's the 25 volt 10, or 25 volt 100 microfarads, I'm sorry, that's this one. So, my spot on the board over here, line them up. Uh, but yeah, so Sega Genesis is a great tool, you, go, you can get those really cheap and you can practice uh, pull-ins capacitors and then you don't have to buy new capacitors if you're just practicing just replace them with the ones that you pulled and um, that's that's honestly a great che cheap way to get practice um, uh, these are very plentiful and um, like I said very cheap you can usually find them even broken ones for nothing man Sh cost of shipping almost probably on eBay um, just for for those less expensive ones. So just want to double check everything and I'll trim again my bottom one here. And like I say, I, I try to just dab that solder on that point while I'm replacing these capacitors rather than actually pulling the whole solder up here and I can do this and use my other whole hand to hold up the board okay so one down let's just keep rolling um, so I'll get this big one now the big one's got bigger straighter legs so it's actually going to be easy to pull there see that's the good thing about having a little bit longer straighter inserts on a capacitor and we'll look again this one did wasn't leaking which is good but a lot of times it'll be these bigger capacitors that end up leaking their culprits and here again we've got one that's a lot half the size this is the one we're replacing so double check and make sure they match. They do. 16 volt, 1000 
microfarads. So trim this up. And again, match up positive to positive and negative to negative on my hole. And straight in. I'll do what they kind of did and left it straight and leave it straight in case um, in case somebody wants to come behind me my, and uh, replace capacitors in another 20 years from now. Couldn't imagine why anybody would care 20 years from now about one of these unless they were just a museum trying to keep them up going, but you never know. Retro gaming hopefully will be living on it that long. Um, there's always movie fans too that want high quality ways to watch old films. Uh, for example, when I went and sold a bunch of PVMs last year too, or a couple months ago to a Philadelphia Museum of Art. Um, I had calibrated everything like the way I do in the videos on the monitors with the Super Nintendo. Uh, but they only cared about what DVDs looked like on the actual monitor. They didn't have any, you know, they don't care. And uh, to be honest with you, 480i is going to give, you're not going to see nearly as much, you know, geometry problems with 480i as you will. 240p, it's just harder to see the screen flickering, it really makes it uh, a lot more like forgiveness in the screen. So, it's going to keep going and place the next one. With this thing, there is a chamber on the back of it that you can see. Um, usually, it won't fill up too much off these jobs. But uh, it's always good to just check it and make sure it's not full. Because it doesn't usually get full. Sometimes you get a stubborn one in here that you have to heat a couple times. I've even had ones where um, I have to go back and put some fresh solder on it. One of these legs, but it's starting to come down and I won't be able to get to it. So. Again, that's not, when, when you see me doing that, I'm not actually touching the board. I'm putting my pressure against the leg capacitor rather than putting pressure, putting pressure on the board at all. Because that's how you damage it. It's a slow process for 127, 129 capacitors in total, but... It's not a job that you have to do very often. Uh, so, cleared it out, check up the capacitor, make sure it's 50 volt 4.7. And that is this one. Trim his legs down. Go positive to positive, negative to negative. And sometimes you drop the capacitor. So this might Problem here is still got some solder left in this bottom hole. Should come right out. That sounds better.
So you get the idea here. I guess people wanted to see me solder. And I wanted to show everybody that I was able to solder. But I take my time. So I knew if we had a soldering video where I was soldering, it could wind up taking a whole lot of time for people to watch me even do the smallest bit of soldering. Because again, I'm going to take my time. I'm not trying to damage any of the existing components that I'm not changing out. And I definitely don't want to destroy or damage any pads or anything. And that leg just didn't bend in there. So. Uh, just keep, keep trying to work through it. Sometimes, like this one, might have to reuse this one on a different spot because it appears I'm going to clip the legs a little bit too short. No, we got them, I think. Sometimes you get a tough spot in between a couple components and yeah, I'll just use this one on the next one. Okay, so let's put this one in here. That's a, the interesting thing is sometimes the spacing on this is a small capacitor and it seems like the spacing on it's way, way spaced out. Just go to the edge and try to pull it straight in there a little bit more. There we go. Double check I got the positive side in there. On the right side. Pin my tip and hit the spot with the solder. And honestly, sometimes even after I do a section, I'll come back and try to just straighten up the soldering I did. Sometimes I use a little bit too much solder uh, initially, so I'll come back and tidy up my work. And I, to do that, I usually just use a little bit more flux. And Try to just remove it with the tip of the actual tip of the soldering iron here. There we go. I like getting it in there though, where it's like perfect. It looks good. So that's another one. And uh, let's take a look at as we're going here how it's kind of turning red on us, which is cool. I like the way that does that. So I'll continue on. And we'll come back with the last few capacitors I'll be changing. If there's anything crazy that shows up in between now and then, I'll stop and uh, cut in for footage. Lastly, I'd like to also show you a before and after uh, sequence I taped. Where I show the before with the regular capacitors that we all replaced, and then it shows it afterwards. So take a quick look at this little shot here now that we've finished up with the capacitors. In the shop back down here looking at this and I wanted to show you the after there's the after you can see the sea of red the new capacitors some are still black because that's what they were changed with most of them are red now just wanted to give you a nice little after shot and now we'll get it back together place all those capacitors and those and uh, so now we're going to take and put it back together in the monitor in the next video. Okay, so there you have it. That's the capacitor job, and it's all been switched out, but the videos just keep growing and growing. So I'm going to do a lot of editing on this video, uh, but I hope you enjoy the finished product, at least on this portion where you get to see some uh, soldering and capacitor removal and replacement. 
But now that it's all been finished and inspected, um, I'm going to let it sit for a day and then I'm going to reassemble the monitor and we'll see if it works, give it some tests. And we can work on the shell too um, in the following video so it won't just be an assembly, it'll also be assembly and we'll work on the outside shell some more. But please uh, let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching Retro Tech and have a great day.